It is my distinct pleasure to welcome Ambassador Nirupama Rao. She, is, she was the Foreign Secretary with the Ministry of External Affairs before taking this post. She was also the Ambassador to China and the High Commissioner of India to Sri Lanka. Madam, this is a pleasure to welcome you. Thank you. Uh, you have just taken up the role of the Ambassador to India. It's a very important time for India on the global scene um, as an emerging power. Um, what do you think our strengths are, which you are going to highlight, especially to this country? Our strengths derive from the fact of our democracy, our enormous diversity, and our capability to manage that diversity, our strong secular foundations, our pluralistic traditions, our civilizational strengths, and uh, the demonstrable dynam dynamism of our economy. We have accelerated our rate of growth in the last few years. We have weathered the global financial crisis with uh, a great deal of finesse and acumen, and we are proud of that. And uh, we, are a f we are a force, a force for stability, and uh, we have acted with maturity and responsibility when it comes to the global political scene. I think India is well poised to become a global power. You know, uh, the world's uh, largest democracy, working with the you know, most successful democracy in the world, uh, there are many parallels we can draw. When you look at the human capital, uh, there's so much that India has contributed in the recent past and will continue to contribute. Um, are there lessons, because since this is going to be uh, a shared economy, a global economy in, in, in some sense, how do you think uh, the human resource and human capital could benefit between the two countries? In my address to the pan IIT conference a few moments ago, I spoke about India and the United States partnering to create global common public goods. And uh, there is this whole concept of the global commons. Uh, there is this need not only to ensure security in an inclusive way, there is also need to promote and accelerate economic growth and to deliver development all across the world. And India is at the heart of this story. Uh, we are uh, a country that uh, encapsulates the best of the modern world with the best of the traditional world. So that's really the uh, uniqueness that India brings to bear on this kind of dialogue and this narrative that we seek to build for a stronger, more peaceful, and more prosperous world. Uh, economic prosperity comes with peace. And India has been always at the forefront of seeking peace with its neighbors and with the countries around the world, uh, especially in these times when there's so much change happening in the Middle East. And America has always played an instrumental role in pushing this agenda forward. Um, US always looks forward to, and I think increasingly look forward to India as a partner in peace, in world peace. Uh, any thoughts on that? Well, India has been playing that role with a great deal of responsibility and experience. I think it begins with the history of our freedom struggle and the values we imbibed from that freedom struggle, values that in fact uh, influenced the formation and the articulation of our foreign policy from the very inception, from the very foundation of our republic. So these are the values when we speak of peace with our neighbors, when we speak of peaceful coexistence. We were one of the architects of the five principles of peaceful coexistence. And today in South Asia, uh, where India is really an anchor of stability and economic growth, this concept that we seek to promote, uh, which is based on these values that uh, established our foreign policy, is about more connectivity sharing the fruits of our economic growth with all our neighbors, promoting regional economic integration, making communication between people much easier, promoting confidence building. I think these, you know, we have wedded principles with pragmatism in all that we do. And in fact, that is also the approach that we bring to bear on the India-US partnership. Uh, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh mentioned this, that, you know, while we seek to comprehend each other, you know, it's always, relations are always an exercise in mutual comprehension. 
But we also bring to this whole narrative a blend of principles and pragmatism. Mm -hmm. uh, as the ambassador, um, what is the most exciting part of your role and what is the most challenging? Well, it's wonderful to be representing India. Well, it's really truly an honor, it's truly a privilege. Wherever I've gone, in whichever country I've served, that has been an enormous privilege. It's been an enormous privilege to be representing your government and your people. So that sense of responsibility uh, never escapes me wherever I am. And here in the United States, uh, this ecosystem that we seek to develop in terms of better partnership between India and the United States, I think the United States and India have so many things in parallel, so many similarities. And we can create this wonderful friendship, this synergy uh, between our two peoples because people are at the heart, uh, at the core of every relationship. So there is a natural affinity between our two peoples. So the foundations for this friendship I believe can be very strong and very enduring. So in that sense, it makes my task much easier. And I'm very happy to be here. And I, will, I look forward to working with the IIT community, which is uh, represented in, in very great strength here among the Indian American community. All of you have distinguished yourselves in whatever you do. You have been, you, we have many iconic representatives uh, who have really blazed a trail when it comes to frontiers of new technologies, changing the way the world lives and communicates. When you look at the telecommunication revolution, when you look at the information superhighway, uh, there are so many milestones which point in the direction of the IITs. So I'm so happy to be working with all of you. I think it, we have to create not only a partnership between our two countries, but a partnership between your community of wonderfully talented and uh, people who have been endowed with intellectual faculties of the highest order and uh, the embassy and the consulates here. My last question is about uh, women empowerment. Uh, you have a long distinguished career and your predecessor is also a woman, Mira Shankar. Personally for you, uh, is it been more of a challenge you think to be in the, uh, in the role that you are now after having been through the Ministry of External Affairs for years. And for the younger generation of Indian girls and women, um, or are there better opportunities, you think, now? Definitely, I think the opportunities have increased enormously for women in India, especially for young women in India. I think a generation ago, uh, things were different. But in my personal experience and in my own life, uh, I must be honest and say I never encountered any sort of barrier or ceiling. Uh, from the time I was a little girl, I was encouraged to do everything that uh, a boy would do. Uh, there was never any, any um, you know, hindrance to achieving what I sought to achieve. And that has been the case in, in during my career also. I have. I know I am a woman and I'm uh, proud to be a woman, but in terms of uh, my professional duties, I have uh, never considered myself different from my male colleagues. Uh, we have worked together and I must say the Ministry of External Affairs of the Government of India is an equal opportunity employer and uh, there are facilities for men and women are perfectly equal. This is mandated by the Constitution of India. So in that sense, India started, I think, with, uh, with the institutional framework. And that inspired by leaders like Mahatma Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru, we created certainly that uh, institutional system that would enable women to move forward. Of course, more needs to be done to uplift many more millions of women, because India is still a developing country and uh, women need, uh, need even more empowerment which is what the government is uh, committed to doing. And I'm reminded of the old Chinese saying, women hold up half the sky. So we wouldn't be what we are without sure. women. Mm -hmm. It's a truly a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you.